Let's solve this. Each Monday through Friday, which is a work week, Avinash will bring either exactly one apple or exactly one banana with him for afternoon snack. Now, this is for a five day week we're talking about. And there's this person who's bringing either one apple or one banana. Both things are not happening. Exactly one of these he's going to bring. Okay. To avoid having to decide which to bring. He doesn't want to take this decision also. Each morning he will toss a coin. And this coin is something which has a face on it on exactly one side. So the other side does not have a face. Then it says that this coin is equally likely to land face up or face down means what? That the probability of being face up and probability of it landing face down is equal, which means if there are two outcomes only, I can say that both of them have a probability of one by two. Okay. Now let's read further. If the coin if the coin lands face up, then he will bring an apple. So this is a connection between which fruit and with how the coin behaves. And if the coin lands face down, then he will bring a banana. So down connects with banana. Okay, this is what we know. Now let's see further. Avinash correctly determined the probability that for a given work week these five days, either he would bring an apple on at least four consecutive days or he would bring a banana on at least four consecutive days. So there is a probability we are talking about if I express this in you know a mathematical form and we are talking about probability apple on at least four days or banana on at least four days. So greater than or equal to four, four days or five days. This is the probability that he correctly determines. It's something. I don't know what this probability is yet. This probability now they say was m divided by n, which means I don't need to write this p here. I'll just say this probability is equal to m over n. Okay, so at this point, I will not just jump into finding this entire probability. I have to know what the question wants. So we'll quickly go and take a look at it. It says, select for m and n the values that are consistent with the information and you have these two columns. Okay, so I really do need to find that probability, which was m and m over n. So now I'll put in effort into finding this probability. If you found the analysis of this data set helpful, then hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it. And to stay tuned with such content, hit the subscribe button below. Now, to take your learning to the next level, we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus Edition. For example, you can build your CR pre-thinking skills, you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation as part of DI, you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now let's get back to the question at hand. So let's think, what do you have? It's something or something else. It's two events connected with an or. And both of these are obviously events that cannot happen together. If in a five day work week, I got apple on at least four days, then banana on at least four days is impossible. So these are two events that are exclusive of each other. They cannot happen together. So simply this probability that I'm interested in is going to be probability A greater than equal to four plus probability B greater than equal to four. Both of these individual probabilities we'll find and then we will add them. Now, at this stage, let me also add the word consecutive because missing that was is not a good idea. It's four consecutive days here and four consecutive days here. It's not any random four days that we're working on. That will change our calculations. So now I want to calculate this. Let me only focus on this one first. Let's take this on the side. Here we are. So focus. At least four consecutive days means what? I have this five day work week. At least four days consecutively can happen only in two possibilities. Either I take Monday through Thursday, these four days, or I take Tuesday through Friday. Nowhere else can I have four consecutive days. That means I'm saying that all of these first four days or all of the last four days of the week, I get an apple. This is what covers my four consecutive days. But the question is not exactly four consecutive days. It said at least four consecutive days, which means this inside itself contains two possibilities, four or five days. So I will also think about the five day case, which simply means that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, all five days, he gets an apple. Now then, I have both of the possibilities, four or five. How do I find this probability? Again, these are two events that cannot happen together. Either he brings it on four or five days. So I'll find individual probabilities and add them. And individual probabilities are these, which I will then 
at. So I'm putting a plus here. So it's all of these different possibilities. There are these three situations you have to deal with. Just find their probabilities one by one. If you think about this one, that I am bringing an apple on the first four days, think about what's happening on the fifth day. The fifth day then I'm bringing a banana. I'll just put that in green to show you the difference. Similarly, in the second scenario, Monday is where you're bringing a banana. Now for the probability. You know, probability apple is half, probability banana is half. Why? Because they were simply connected with up and down and up and down were half and half. So first, let me write the probability for this thing. So Monday, apple, probability is 1 by 2. Tuesday, apple, probability is 1 by 2. This way till Thursday, it's just apple. But Friday, even if it's a banana, the probability is still 1 by 2, right? Because these were equally likely events, which means this entire first probability here, this one is equal to 1 over 32, this way. Similarly, if I look at this one, why would there be any difference? It's still five days and everything is equally likely. So I'm going to have another 1 by 32 from here. And I'm going to have another 1 by 32 from this one as well because it's still half and half. So essentially, I am adding 1 by 32 with itself three times or I can simply say I am multiplying it this way. So this is 3 by 32, which is the probability of him bringing an apple on at least four consecutive days. So now let me take this here. I already have the first probability. Let's write it here. This is 3 by 32. Now, be careful not to just rush and try to find the answer already. There is a plus and you also have to do the same thing for B. Tell me, is there any reason why the calculations will be different? If I just switch this from A to B, even then it remains the exact same thing. All of the analysis remains the same because it's still equally likely, which means for B also, after all of that work, I am going to get the exact same probability, 3 by 32. And if I'm adding both of them, it means my final answer is 6 by 32. At this point, let me ask you this. Could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented? Such is the power of the process of owning the data set. And because this skill may not come naturally to many of you, we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the EGMAT DI course and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz. In fact, in the TPA quant modules in the two-part analysis course, we teach you how to get comfortable with this question type. You will gain the confidence to handle any question of this type in the most efficient manner. We serve more than 58 specially curated questions at the right progression so that you can learn various aspects of this question type, including the process skills of inference, translate and visualize. Thus, throughout the DI course, through around 500 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably use the owning the data set approach. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. This is the probability. Now, either I will have m and n exactly as 6 and 32, or I can also have, you know, uh, 12 as m and 64 as n, because even then the proportion, the fraction, this value remains the same. So let's see 6 by 32. How do I find this? Okay, I don't have to think that much. I really did see 6 and 32. Now let's just summarize everything we did here. First, we carefully understood everything that was given to us in the question here, how Avinash was making this decision, how coin up and down was connected with apple and banana. Then we wrote down an expression for this complicated probability that it was A greater than or equal to 4 or B greater than or equal to 4. Then we split it into 2 by making a plus here. And then we were careful to consider the word consecutive here. Otherwise, there would be a lot more cases in which he could bring 4 days and apple. You know, any of the 4 days it could be. Then we found the probability of this thing on the side here and we saw there were three cases in which this would happen. We found that each of these had 1 by 32 as the probability. So simply 3 by 32 became the probability for A greater than or equal to 4 consecutive days. Then there was no reason B would be any different. We added just the same thing, got 6 by 32 and put it here. So it was a very simple question if you have a strong hold on probability, how probability works, how you will you know, create all of these cases. And of course, nothing would start until you completely understand the given information. If you were unable to even connect up, down, up, banana to half half and then you know break the probability this way nothing would move unless we translate everything here mathematically